I'm Chris Morrow and this is Comic-Con at Home. My home is in San Diego in my living room and I'm talking to Jessica. Jessica, hi, if you could introduce yourself and tell me where your home is. Hi, I'm Jessica saying, um, good morning. It's great to like speak with you again. Uh, my home is Los Angeles, California. So not too far from you, like two, two hours north without traffic. Uh, yeah, there's no traffic. So I don't think I've ever traveled to LA without traffic before. So I don't know what that would be like. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Now with everyone safer at home, I, unfortunately, I wish I could go down there more often to San Diego. But uh, yes, I am a international comics historian. So, you know, I have done everything from UCLA Geek Week. I was one of their final finale speakers as a fireside chat. I am, I was the San Diego Comic-Con in, independent film judge for their festival in 2018. I am a podcast movement guest speaker uh, for this year, for 2020. And I was one of the only Americans that went to an international manga summit that took place in Japan. So I do a lot of things where I'm both a comics educator and also a public speaker that kind of allows me to go around the world and also appear on Robert Kirkman's AMC's Secret History of Comics. I appeared in the first episode speaking about Marvel, Marvel history, excuse me. Very so, cool. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's always interesting to rattle off your credentials <laughs> when asked. How did the panel go? Tell me about it. It went really well. So the panel is the 75th anniversary of Moomin, which can kind of see behind me. Uh, Moomin is a very well-known Finnish comic and also book series that is really well-known internationally. However, in North America, I still feel that there should be more awareness being brought to it. You know, we're so inundated with Western comics and Western superheroes. So it was by Dove Janssen, and she was really a progressive forefront you know, woman of her time because it was done and written after World War II and she kind of saw the effects of the war. So a lot of the things that me and my panelists touched upon are kind of this legacy she left behind and she has such impact on Finnish culture. A lot of her characters and her herself have been, I guess the easy way to say it is in America, she would be kind of the Mr. Fred Rogers of her time. She was always about love, tolerance, everything. And the panelists I had were absolutely amazing. I was really honored to have them. Uh, one of them is uh, Marika Makarov. She is the CEO of Gutsy Animation. They are doing the current run of Moomin, Moomin Valley, which is an animated series. And it's gonna be available in the US soon, but it's in the UK, it's in Japan, it's obviously in Finland. And for her English speaking cast, she has, like Roseman Pike, Kate Winslet, Taryn Egerton, Warwick Davis. So all these names that we would recognize here. And uh, I also have uh, Serke. She is a academic scholar and a historian of Tove Janssen and the Moomin kind of franchise in general. She studies it not just historically, but she's written books, both published in Finnish and in Japanese. And she spoke a lot about just the different mediums it appeared in, because it's not just in novels and comic books and pictures and web, you know, comic strips. It's been movies. It has been done in plays. There's been musicals about it. So she kind of studies the franchise in all of its mediums. And my last panelist, is um, Rika. She is the head curator of the one and only Moomin Museum in Tampere, Finland. And it is unique and kind of one of its kind because there's no other Moomin specific museum like that around the world. And she is the head curator there and she talks about all the different exhibits that they have and just everything that they have on display there that adults and children alike can really experience all day. And I think all of their jobs are just so interesting, absolutely amazing. And each woman really had their own unique perspective about why Dobe Janssen's creation of Moomin and Moomin Trolls actually kind of the same thing 
last it for 75 years as most franchises are usually popular for a little bit and then loses its trend. However, hers just keeps on going. So we hope the panel at San Diego Comic Con, which I think went really well, we had that like great number of viewerships. I'm hoping it kind of brings more awareness to North America and especially the United States. Um, now that we're all safer at home, like you said, and like we've touched upon that, hopefully people will be able to find more content, something new to read. It looks like the character is kind of hippo looking ish. How did they develop mm -hmm. um, drawing of the characters? Um, you are very wise and observant. Uh, I think most people here would be like, they look like hippos. I believe it was in her mind, that's kind of how Tove Janssen saw what her characters look like. So I don't know in more in an in-depth way, uh, I would, I want to say being inspired by hippos, but I feel like it's more of what she feels the characters she look like. There are other characters that she draws that are a little bit more humanoid, like Little Mai and Snuffkins. They're more human looking, but their personalities come from, are inspired by people that she knew in her real life. So it's kind of, if you look up their entire character base that she has, they kind of range in different looks. But yeah, they, they kind of do look like little white hippos. And I think that's why they're so well received in Japan in their popularity in Japan more than anywhere else outside of Finland is because they're very kawaii, they're very cute, and they have very anthropomorphic look to them. It's quite unusual for a woman back 75 years ago to actually have something like this and to have it to yeah. where it's become worldwide. It is, it is. She was really, again, progressive for her time. She uh, had both male and female partners, not, not at the same time, but throughout her lifetime. She stayed with one person, a partner, until the end of her time. She was also multi-talented. She was also a painter, a writer, a sculptor. She did many things. I also know that at the time, a lot of people had felt she couldn't merchandise or she couldn't do her own things. Like women were not entrepreneurs. You don't take your art, you don't put it on cups, you don't put it on plates, you don't put them on t-shirts, you don't sell, there's no entrepreneurship. But she did not care for that. She just went ahead and kind of lived a life that made her happy. And she kind of did what she wanted at the time where really it was frowned upon or taboo. So I think that's why she's such a respected and like legacy person in Finland and in a lot of the European countries. When do you think this is going to be out in the United States to where it's going to be more mainstream? What's your premonition on this? Prediction. Hmm. What is your prediction? Yeah, what is my prediction on this? <laughs> I do know, uh, you know, in the panel we cover from um, Marika says that soon the United States will get the animation, you know, because they've done a deal with over dozens of countries now to kind of have it more worldwide and spread out. I'm hoping in the next year or two, because our current safer at home, depending on where you're at, we don't know how long that will be. And parents and children are gonna start looking for more content. And since this is at San Diego Comic-Con, one, one of the world's largest pop culture conventions, there's obviously an awareness. And I do feel that if people start researching like, Peanuts, Snoopy, Tintin, it will eventually, you go down that Wikipedia rabbit hole, or if you happen to find animation, like new animation for my kids to watch, I believe it's gonna pop up, and hopefully that will bring more awareness in a year or two. Very cool, anything else you'd like to add? Please, everybody, if you're watching this, go out, spread the news, look her up, Tove Janssen, does start with a T. I know it's pronounced with kind of a light D sound to it. And just start with her books and her comics. And I guarantee you, I think in our current world, we need more message of love and tolerance. So I, and many of it's translated into English. So I really feel like you would 
really enjoy her stories and her adventures and feel warmth and love. And hopefully you can share it with your other friends and family. Thank you, Jessica. This is Chris Morrow at Comic-Con at Home. Thank you. Thank you.